I'm back. If you're a clown slut, follow me on Twitter. Where all the cool clown sluts hang out. We're back for part two of tonight's special double feature. Let's see if I can work this with my gloves. <laughs> you should see me counting money at the gas station. This is Lady Frankenstein. Only the monster she made could satisfy her strange desires. Rated R. Not sure if this one was at the drive-in or not, but I'll bet it was on a lot of late-night picture shows. Midnight movies. Do they even have midnight movies anymore? Well, I mean, not only because of the pandemic, but, like, before that, did they still have midnight movies with crazy old movies like this? Maybe at your local art house. I switched to dry vermouth. And that's delicious. It's called a bamboo cocktail. Lady Frankenstein is a 1972 New World picture directed by Mel Wells. And starring Joseph Cotton and Mr. Jane Mansfield himself, Mickey Hargitay. Now before you get on me about Mr. Jane Mansfield, was Mickey Hargitay really ever more famous than Jane? I don't think he was. <laughs> okay. Now I kind of went on about this one. <laughs> Our last one was short, but... I, wow. I must have fancied myself a real film critic and wrote a big story. But it's pretty good, so listen. An interesting twist on the Frankenstein story. Cotton is an adequately deranged Baron von Frankenstein whose experiments with bringing the dead to life are interrupted by his visiting daughter. She, however, is deviously inspired by the encounter and befriends the Baron's assistant, Charles, this time. Charles. Got it? So the first attempt to bring the creation life is thwarted when lightning ignites the creature's enormous head. Defeated, they leave the disfigured creature, disfigured creature to decide what to do next. And wouldn't you know it? The creature comes to life. You didn't see that coming, did you? The hideous monster kills the Baron, and when his daughter finds out, she hatches a plan to build her own man, who will defeat the beast, monster, mishap. Charles is resistant at first, but is soon swayed by her womanly charms. Or, or maybe her tits. I'm not sure. A strapping police captain 
in a black cape. That'd be Hargate. He was a muscle man, you know. Bodybuilder. Strapping figure. He's right on the case, and he's asking lots of pesky questions. Meanwhile, the monster kills. And paying homage to the original story, <clears throat> the monster comes across, across a young couple and macking in the bushes. Is that, is that a thing anymore? Making out in the bushes. Macking. Where you been, Murph? That was like 30 years ago. <laughs> anyway, they're making out in the bushes. <laughs> he kills the guy and he picks the girl up and throws her in the water. There's our homage to the original picture. <laughs> then he's off to kill some more. So back at the Frankenstein estate, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> the daughter has lured the handsome but slow young buck Tommy into the house and sets about seducing him. Charles is waiting in the wings to smother Tommy. Then when they're off to the lab, Lady Frankenstein transplants Charles' brain into Tommy's body and brings her creation to life using questionable electronics. <laughs> Maybe she got some stuff at Radio Shack, wired them up, a couple of 9-volt batteries. Zzz. The creature turns out perfect. And his wig looks just like Tommy's hair. It's uncanny, almost like it's his real hair. <clears throat> well, outside, there's a mob of angry villagers with torches, even. Villagers with torches. They gather and overcome the police captain. But not before the monster finds his way back to exact his revenge on Charles. Of course, Charles is now in Tommy's body. So, I'm not quite sure how the monster recognizes Charles looking like Tommy. But he does, and they start to fighten. <clears throat> the two supermen fight until the lady ends it. The villagers storm the house and set everything on fire, and, you know, kind of like the original... Frankenstein picture except in the basement how about a spoiler you ready for a spoiler it won't make too much difference overcome with lust during this chaos the lady jumps Charles Tommy I mean who is he at this point well he looks he looks like Tommy so Rare. And that is how they are found. The police captain and Tommy's sister find them in a nude embrace. <laughs> Surrounded by complete chaos. Now, it was just Valentine's Day, so we'll call that romantic. I think so. Okay. The sets in this picture are fantastic. 
back in the 70s, they were able to recreate Gothic style very well because it was kind of popular all around in the early 70s. This wrought iron and stuff, yeah. So, and the story's good too. The acting, eh. but the monster's hilarious. I'll put him in one of the ads so you can see him. But overall, overall, a three is all I can muster. <laughs> Even with the boobs. It's a three-ring circus on the late-night picture show tonight. Now. Look what I did last weekend. This took me hours. I paired up all 360 movies I had left. and put them on these cards as double features. So I'm going to pull one out and we'll see what we're watching next week. Well, what we're talking about. We won't really be watching it. I will say, though, that Lady Frankenstein is worth the watch. I got one here. Folded in half. Well, I didn't get it. Monkey got it. Next Friday on the Late Night Picture Show it's Blood Creature and Blood Freak. You're in for a special treat. <laughs> we'll see about Blood Creature, <laughs> but B Blood Freak is unparalleled. <laughs> so be sure to tune in next week. If you liked tonight's show, give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a thumbs down. Leave some comments. Nope, you suck. <laughs> That's my favorite so far. <laughs> this has been the Late Night Picture Show. I'm your host, Murph Werderf. Tune in next week for Blood Creature and Blood Freak. Good night, kids.